One of the criticisms of, I don't even think it's necessarily of the medical industry, more nutrition and food, particularly in America, that we allow ingredients in our foods that are banned in places like Europe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, and the criticism that come, that goes to the medical community when talking about this stuff is you guys are treating the sy symptom and not the root cause. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. You know, obesity is uh, something that has become a bigger problem in recent years, and it's definitely a bigger problem in, uh, in the United States. And there is uh, this problem that a lot of people know if, for example, if you go to Europe, you go, you go for a trip, and you can eat like pizza and you can eat pasta and you don't seem to gain weight. And then all of a sudden you come to the US and you eat a little bit of pasta or a little bit of pizza and you put on like, you know, feels like 10 pounds. Yeah. And it's true. I think that our, our food supply needs to change. So that's the big food. And the way that the food is served through, let's say, I the other day I had a, I mean, it broke my heart. I had a mom and a child of eight or nine come to my office, and I was seeing the mom for a surgery uh, evaluation, and the child was had a Big Mac, like a double Big Mac, French fries, and a Coke uh, early in the morning as breakfast, you know? So, I mean, it's multifactorial with big food and with the processed food. Did you say something to the mom? No. You're not allowed to? No, it's not that I'm not allowed to, but you know, I don't want to judge somebody without knowing what their background is, and it's not somebody that I know well. It's somebody that I was seeing one time. Okay. And you know, for me to get in the middle of that uh, in a you know visit is would it, it would take me you know a good two hours to get in get get in the middle of that because. I don't know if she's a single mom and she's working and she's trying to make things, you know, make make ends meet and she's trying to raise a kid and she's suffering with, you know, I, I don't want to judge. So I don't know. I don't know her situation. But when I saw it, it really like broke my heart because when I look at 40 million children that are battling obesity, I'm sure that's part of it. You know, the ease of going to McDonald's and what the food is there and the processed food and the food that is obesogenic and we're all addicted to sugar, you know, in this country. Like, the, sh the problem with sugar is that when you, when you eat it, it makes you want to eat more, and it makes you want to eat more, and that's one of the things that this, this medication breaks, actually. Today's episode of Beyond is brought to you by MoonPay. MoonPay is your portal to Web3 where you can transact with peers globally and own your digital identity. MoonPay makes it fast and simple to jumpstart your Web3 journey. Quickly use your debit or credit card to buy and sell crypto and purchase digital collectibles. Visit moonpay.com to get started. Biggest challenge here, and it's not just, you know, with mental health, it's when someone gets divorced or, or something happens in the family, uh, the word is shame, that people feel shame about it. Yeah. Especially, and this is not just the Persian community, any community that's small where people know each other, mm -hmm. you see this problem. Yeah, it's for sure. It's, you know, it, everybody judges everybody. And but I think to me, the most important thing is you judge yourself harshly. And you have to you have to have self compassion. If you don't have self compassion, then you're not going to have compassion for somebody else. And that's what I try to teach people because I try not I'm not ashamed of the depression that I had. I'm not ashamed of mental health challenges that I have sometimes. And I'm, you know, to me, it's, it's what makes me stronger. And stronger, I don't mean as, as harsh. Stronger means that I can help other people. That's, that's what I mean by stronger. And when you take something, a challenge, and you turn it into a gift, that, that's stronger. So, but the only way to get to this point is to have compassion for the person that you were and realize that that person, you know, was suffering and realize that there's a potential for another person that 
you know, is hiding that suffering. And you can, if you can open up the door and let them come through and tell you that they are suffering, then you can help them and overcome. And they, that person can pass it to somebody else. Yeah. I really think that the, it starts with self-compassion. That's, yeah, but I agree. But it takes tremendous maturity to get to self-compassion because I tell you, I mean, your friends may judge you, but the way that I see people talk to themselves, you know, if you, if you, if you recorded what your brain tells you all day, and I'm talking even to myself, yeah, I mean, anybody. You, you wouldn't want you want you would never talk to your best friend that way. <laughs> right? That's true. People talk so harshly to themselves and they judge themselves too harshly. But if you can if you can come to a point that you know, not like a uh, not like a just a superficial way of just oh, I'm going to repeat some words and I love myself and that. No, truly like love yourself, you know? Truly have compassion for yourself. You are a source of light in this world. You know, you are a God's child, and you need to be able to carry that to other people. And so if you don't, if you don't get to that point, how are you going to raise children? How are you going to have compassion for your spouse? How are you going to have compassion for um, people that come across your way? How, are you gonna have comp how am I going to have compassion for my patients when they come? What, what am I going to do? You loser, you gained weight. You loser, you're depressed. What, what kind of a person are you? That's, that's what I hear when, when young, like 20 year olds reach out to me and say, why don't you tell this person to exercise? That's what I hear. I hear lack of compassion and lack of understanding. But if, if because I was where I was, and because of having compassion for myself, I have compassion for the patients that walk in through the door and I understand where they're coming from. And believe me, when, I, when they get up and they hug me and they kiss me and they, they cry, I know where they're coming from because they, they You've broken a wall that would have taken maybe 20 years of therapy. I found that it's hard because we have so many different messages to share to sort of put them in order of like, what's the most important? What needs to be shared most urgently in this world? So I came up with this scenario. So the scenario is you are at the Oscars and you're nominated for let's say a documentary about weight loss. And they call out all the nominees. This show is going to be in the Oscars and it's going to be nominated? You and maybe, I? maybe, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but uh, you're sitting there and they announce the winner. You hear your name and you get up, you go to the stage, you thank everybody that you need to thank, your wife, me for being the interviewer. <laughs> Um, your kids, God, of course. Um, and then there's that 45 second to one minute period where you get to say whatever you want and it's going to be recorded. There are going to be headlines. It's going to be on YouTube. People are going to share the clips on Instagram and TikTok. What do you say? What message is so important to you that you feel it needs to be said right now? So you'll never see me in the Oscars. <laughs> it's just not the person I we am. We just don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you end up dragging me in there. Uh, the message that I'd like to get to people is one of gratitude. You have to start your day with gratitude. You know, I start every morning with the Modeani prayer, with, which is the uh, Jewish prayer of gratitude. And I think that if you fill your heart with gratitude first thing in the morning when you wake up, it sort of like overflows. And what you say to yourself is, okay, if I am so full of thankfulness for everything that I have in my life, how can I help somebody else? And imagine if everybody, everybody feels this way. If everybody feels like, you know, for me, because I have that attitude, I never feel like life is a competition. I never compete with anybody for money. I never compete with anybody for status. I never compete with anybody for getting into Oscars. <laughs> I never compete with anybody for getting onto a podcast. I, I have people that call me. I don't care about that. You ask me, what do I want to plug in here? I don't want to plug anything. Okay, I just want to help people. This is the reason I came on here, because I want people to understand what these drugs are, the benefits, the risks, and the potential uh, harms, and what it could do for them. But I'm not trying to push anything. Uh, because every morning, I start with gratitude, and my heart is so full, I just want to help people. I love that. Beautiful. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Nicole. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Today's episode of Beyond is brought to you by MoonPay. 
MoonPay is your portal to Web3 where you can transact with peers globally and own your digital identity. MoonPay makes it fast and simple to jumpstart your Web3 journey. Quickly use your debit or credit card to buy and sell crypto and purchase digital collectibles. Visit MoonPay.com to get started.